Hey, Cypher here. Sully is not a terrible movie, but it has hurt real-life people's careers, and that is worth exposing for the sham that it is. Any movie that makes its protagonist's actual counterpart have to apologize for its creation is obviously flawed from the get-go. But honestly, this movie ain't that bad. Maybe it could be improved with some cinemagraphic tricks, but that wasn't done here. If anything, it was kind of necessary for the movie to be at all interesting. Plus, there is a personal touch that director Clint Eastwood put into this film that kind of explains why it has this kind of odd inaccuracy. I think most people remember this happening. There's not much of a story here, so I'll keep it brief. U.S. Airways Flight 1549 was taking off from LaGuardia Airport in January of 2009 when it was struck by a flock of geese, which took out both engines of the Airbus A320. Birds. Whoa. It couldn't turn around fast enough, so ended up having to land in the Hudson River. Ferry boats swooped in and grabbed everybody up before they could be seriously harmed by the frigid water. A later investigation was conducted and found that lead pilot Chesley Sullenberger, or Sully for short, had completed, quote, the most successful ditching in aviation history. People quickly glommed on to the incident and press called it the miracle on the Hudson. Many drew direct references to 9-11 as kind of a redemptive story for New York air traffic. You know, it's been a while since New York had news this good. Especially with an airplane in it. In this case, everyone survived. Sully was anointed a hero in the media, and there was much rejoicing. There are so many primary sources to go after here. The investigation has a transcript and report publicly available online. CCTV cameras caught the action as it actually happened. The air traffic controller audio is also easily accessible. Access 1539 hit birds through thrust on both There's really no blanks to fill in here. It is all very well documented in exhaustive detail. As such, there really isn't any question as to what is accurate or not here. The evidence leaves very little room for interpretation. Every scene in the movie depicting the actual crash is incredibly accurate. Although, I will say that they made the air traffic controller sound like he was freaking the hell out over the radio. Cactus 1549, do you read me? But if you listen to how he actually spoke, that's not the case. Yeah, I guess 1529, uh, I think this is an allowable embellishment. Do you want to see these actors blank-faced and deadpanning while grappling with a plane crash? That would be boring. So of course they played it up a little bit. No harm, no foul. But when the movie hits the investigation scenes, it sinks. Eastwood depicts the National Transport Safety Board hearing as being directly antagonistic to Sully. Look, I'm sorry if you're frustrated, but our job is to investigate how a plane ended up in the Hudson River. Um, he even said in an interview that he thought that the NTSB were kind of railroading Sully into believing it was his fault. So Eastwood actually believes this. Sully does not, and has made that clear in the press. The actual NTSB investigators have been vocally opposed to their portrayal, and that is understandable, since this may hurt their reputations, but not horribly so. It is inaccurate for sure, but I think it is kind of necessary. If you go and read the transcript and report, you're going to be bored as hell. I know I was. This movie is not boring though, and it needed an antagonist to usurp even though in real life the NTSB was not trying to railroad Sully in the slightest. On that subject, they didn't do live simulations of the flights. That would take too much coordination. Also, it was not at Sully's behest that they factored in time for human error. Simulations, and now we are watching actual sims, but I can't quite believe you still have not 
taken into account the human factor. The NTSB protested the simulation results that were done by the airplane manufacturer in France. They had them redo the simulations with the delay added, like the movie shows. Just not because Sully made some sort of grandiose stand against the NTSB. If anything, it was the NTSB who fought for Sully's interpretation of events. Eastwood obviously believes that they were attacking Sully. Every computer simulation with the exact flight parameters demonstrated that a return to LaGuardia was possible. But he is just being an ignoramus, as Hollywood so often is. Besides, ignorance is something that these kinds of films practically function on. There's one thing he could have done to make these scenes better and maintain that antagonism. And I can say it in two words. Dutch angles. In cinematography, when you tilt the camera sideways a bit, it symbolizes that there is something off-kilter about the story. And we, the audience, naturally intuit that. That tilt is called a Dutch angle. It introduces subjectivity. Another way to do this is point of view shots, or just POV for short. You could have seen the hearings through Sully's perspective. The movie seems to be introducing this when it shows Sully having bad dreams. This is so surreal. I guess I'm having a little trouble separating reality from whatever the hell this is. Yeah. But doesn't follow through. You see, if you film like Eastwood did, then it communicates to the audience that the omniscient camera lens is telling the truth, as though we are seeing objective reality. But if this was shot with POV and Dutch angles, we'd understand that Sully is just perceiving events as being antagonistic, rather than the long, dry, humdrum affair this actually was. Eastwood has an alternative motive for all of this, though. He is excising some personal demons with this. In 1951, after he had been drafted into the army during the Korean War, though he never deployed there, he was involved in a water landing himself. They ditched the plane miles off the coast near Point Reyes, California. He had to swim to shore all by himself at night. Luckily, the water is warmer there at night, and he survived that harrowing experience. You can see why he chose this subject, as well as his more conservative leanings, which means he prefers the more orthodox approach to history, which leads to seeking triumphalist narratives distorting the truth in the process. Besides, Democrats have their own problems on that front as well. But at least it's a better way to express himself than debating an empty chair again, I guess. Everyone, please take your seats, uh, otherwise Clint Eastwood uh, will yell at them. <laughs> So if you know that the NTSB is being unfairly lambasted here, this movie is fun enough. It's kind of a dad flick, but it works. The demonizing of the NTSB was a necessary inaccuracy, just to make this not a boring mess. Trust me, the Smithsonian recreation of this certainly is. Ugh. Sully the movie could have at least been filmed better though, but that's just a knock on Eastwood himself. At least I found an instance where it is actually better for Hollywood to be inaccurate for once. That's worth celebrating, right? And there was much rejoicing. 